guys, I'm Elena Capra, and I thank you all for joining me this evening for this special Home Show Facebook Live. So I was thinking about topics that would be relevant right now for everyone, and I thought that decluttering and organizing the bedroom and even some restyling tips for your bedding would be a good thing. So I hope that you are all safe at home and um, just going to get some of these tips and be able to implement them now as you continue to declutter and organize your house. This is a good time to do that. I think we don't always have time for these daily tasks and right now a lot of us have more time in the house. So if you do and want to get things organized, I'm going to show you some of my favorite tips on how to do that. So um, before I jump into the closets and the bed styling, I do want to talk to you a little bit about the one thing that I think we all neglect when it comes to organizing drawers, and that is the sock drawer. Okay, I think the sock drawer is definitely something that for me personally, I, it's always been that last drawer where you just like throw them in, roll them up, done, and then sometimes there's like mismatched pairs. Um, it's just one of the toughest drawers to organize. So over the weekend, I took some time to organize mine. I spent some time researching some of my favorite folds, and some of my favorite organizers, and I'm gonna show you those right now. So, first of all, I love the organizing bins, okay? I, I got these um, for just a few dollars each. I ordered them online. They're very inexpensive, and a lot of them will come in a pack. So, like, you'll have, like, a larger one like this. This is great not only for socks, but for underwear drawers, for even things like bikinis, um, smaller items. This is a great way to organize small things and keep them contained and able to be seen, right? And uh, there's even some larger sizes, some with um, more of the vertical strips here for, for larger pieces, bathing suits perhaps. And I also love these because when you stack them on top of one another, a lot of these will fit in one standard drawer, okay? So these stacked fit in one standard dresser drawer that I had, which is awesome because when you add levels to the organization, you're just maximizing space. It's great, the levels of this, you've got two, two stacks, you can pull them out, find what you need. So the storage bins are definitely a great way to start because you can keep everything organized, they're inexpensive. And I also love that they don't take up the entire drawer. What's so good about these is some of them are smaller, there's a variety of sizes as you see. So you could use an organizer and then fold or roll things in the other areas, okay? So even if you don't wanna use an organizer, I wanna show you some of my favorite sock folds that I found online that are just totally giving me a ton of maximized space. But first to start with this one, here I actually just rolled these, okay? I rolled them so you could see with the decorative socks, when you roll them inside out, you can't see what they are. If you're looking for that special pair, hard to find. So I rolled them with the, the decorative part out and then I neatly put them in here, okay? But say you wanna fold them, no problem. My, the square fold is my favorite fold, okay? This is, just want you all to see. So if you could see the sides, this is a nice flat little square, okay? Definitely takes up so much less space than a roll, okay? And super easy to do. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. Now this works best when you are folding socks that have a little bit more of an ankle, okay? Um, this is good for about like this sort of like mid ankle to a little bit higher, okay? So for the square fold, what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a T with the socks. Now you wanna keep the bottom part facing up. So if you're on a table and you're folding this, the, um, the sole part, the part of the bottom of your foot will face up and you are gonna create a T with that, okay? You see this? So you're creating a T with the bottom parts of the socks facing up towards you. All right, next step. The one that's the closest to the bottom, the one that's on the bottom, you're gonna fold one side in, so maybe the part with the closed toe, and then you are gonna bring the open part in and you are gonna tuck in the closed toed part to the open, okay? So that just inserts right in the open part of the sock, okay? So you're, that's actually gonna keep it contained, all right? So step one, the lower level is inserted. Step two, you're gonna do the same thing and bring in the folded part and tuck it in to the open side. So I'm gonna go do that. And when that is all said and done, you have your square fold, okay? I love that you even can even see the decorative part still, okay? It's a nice flat little sock fold. 
It's perfect. And now again, if you don't use the organizers, no big deal. You could line these up in your drawer. You can get as crazy with it as you want. It's a fun way to organize the socks. And again, super easy to do. Um, it even works really well. Um, I did this, this fold even with um, like small ankle socks, okay? And you see how nice that looks? It's still possible to do, look how small these socks are. These are just like the little anklet running ones. I was still able to do that. So again, it's the same concept. You are gonna keep it in a T with the um, bottom, the sole of the foot up facing towards you. You're gonna fold in the lowest level one, the bottom one, the toe, and tuck the toe part into the opening. Okay, and then you're gonna do the same thing on the next level and tuck the foot part into the open end, okay? And what's this is like, learning this fold has like revolutionized my sock drawer, okay? This is so much nicer. And again, right now it might not be a time we're not traveling, but eventually when we're able to travel and pack a suitcase, right? This is great for packing too. It's safe space, it's nice and confined, and it's much flatter than a standard roll. So the square fold, definitely a great one. And now I just wanna show you one other because if you're like me, uh, especially a lot of the women and any of the guys, everyone likes smaller socks. Like when, when you're wearing sneakers, you don't want the sock to show necessarily. So I wear a lot of the, the ones that are no-show type of socks, right? Also very hard to fold or roll or whatever. So I um, did this fold, which is I learned online. And this particular fold, and if you could see it, it kind of like keeps it all packaged up. The front part is open. It's almost like a little dumpling. Um, it's cute. And this is a great fold because you are able to sort of make kind of just make the socks like take up less space. Okay, so how do, how do we do this fold? All right, so with these, I'm just gonna show you a quick, quick tutorial on this as fast as I can. So for these, it's the same thing, not quite the same. Okay, so now you're gonna stack them so they're even, so both sides are together. So the open side and the closed toe side are, are on top of one another, okay? The one that's on top, you're gonna fold the toe up just a little bit like that, okay? And now you're gonna roll from the bottom. So you're gonna roll these till you get to the top. And then at the very open one, you are going to pull that closed, okay? So now you get this neat little sock fold, all right? And then those can go right in the bins. And again, if you don't have it in a bin, these just keep it nice and contained. I even put stockings, other things in here. So I hope, that helps you organize your sock drawer. And again, you could stack these and definitely fit multi-levels in the drawers if you get the right sizes. And we will be posting some links of some of my favorites in the comments, as well as on the Home Show blog. We're gonna have a wrap-up blog of all of these tips. So if you did miss that, stay tuned. And please, as a reminder, leave your questions in the comments. Um, once this finishes, I will get to all of your questions. and answer whatever it is that I can help. But just keep in mind, we are going to have a little wrap up blog with some of my favorite items and just some recaps of some of the stuff that I am covering. Okay, so we've got the sock fold. But now say, what is another thing that we definitely can't get organized? I don't know, for me, sometimes it's like baseball hats, right? I mean, well, how do you put these away? If you don't have a large space to store them, or even if you do, I've looked online and found some great solutions that I personally think are good. Um, for me, sometimes I have a shelf area where I just like stack them one inside of the other like this. Um, but the downside of that is you don't always get to see when you're looking for that one hat, you're kind of flipping through everything. So I found something that I thought was rather a great solution. And that is, so this is a little piece. It just Velcros onto the hanger. Okay. It was just a few dollars online. And I'm just going to show you how this works. And there's a few simple, easy thing. Look at this. So this is how it comes, right? You get a nice flat hanger. I love the felt hangers. I'll more on that later. And it just wraps around the bottom. And so now you've got this great hanging thing. So you can clip all of your hats on here, right? And then seat them all in one space. It keeps them organized. It keeps them neat. And not only that, but it's, I think it's a nice way to visually uh, display stuff. So you see here, I got the hats on here, okay? And it's also great for like belts, long scarves, anything that's long that you need to hang up and you just wanna contain that's vertical. Look at that, it doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, so this is not only for hats, this little uh, piece here, you can use this for anything that's long, anything that needs to be easily stored. And I think it's a great storage solution. So 
we've got that covered. Now, let's talk about the closet a little bit more, okay? So for me, uh, if you could see a little peek behind me, that's my closet, okay? It's not huge. I live in a condo. It's my only place to store stuff. But whether your closet is big or small, there's a lot, we, it could all use decluttering, right? So some of my favorite tips for decluttering is go through, I take everything out and put it all on the bed or whatever flat surface, lay it all out. Go through hanger by hanger. And then just to quickly uh, speak on that, we're gonna just mention again that these felt hangers are my favorite thing, okay? When you're ready to declutter, you're gonna want to also maximize space. So I highly recommend these hangers. The felt hangers are great. You maximize your hanging space. Look how flat these are. If you don't use them already, definitely consider getting them. You could I almost double the amount of storage in my closet when I switch to these, okay? So definitely a great option. And just for, for some of you, you could do these in colors. I've seen them in silver on this part and also in rose gold and gold. They sell them at a variety of places online. Lots of great deals right now. And again, you don't have to switch these all at once if you are thinking about using these. You could do section by section. Pick a favorite uh, area of, let's say, like your favorite blouses or dresses. Start with that, and then you could add whenever you have the time to add more of these hangers. So you don't always have to make the investment all at once for the hangers, but there are a lot of great deals right now with these. And another great thing is that, like, it keeps the clothes on. Um, a lot of the times for women, we have these like blouses that have these little loops and those loops are annoying because they always pop out of your clothes and you're wearing them, but they're really for hanging. But with these kind of hangers, you rarely need those loops. So I can cut them off and just hang your stuff and it will not fall off because it's no slip. Okay. So these are great. Now back to the decluttering, go through your closet, get rid of the things that you haven't worn in over a year. If you haven't worn it in over a year, unless it's sentimental or special or a very fancy dress that you want to keep, try to consider donating or getting rid of it or, or, or storing it somewhere else. Um, if you do need to hold on to it. And for me, I have held on to things that I love. I mean, there's a bunch of dresses that I don't want to get rid of because they may need to wear them again. They're fancier. I don't know when. So what I did, I love these bags. Okay. These are the underbed storage bags. These are also good for under any other furniture object. I have it under a sofa and, and where I'm storing them in my bedroom because I don't have room under the bed. So they're usually around like five inches thick or so, right? So they're not that thick, so they can fit under a lot of furniture. Um, even in a closet, if you're storing these in some sort of closet in an odd space, these definitely help keep everything contained. So my suggestion when you're using one of these clothing bags, right? Um, first of all, the ones with the plastic, at least some clear opening is great because you can see into it. But there's no way when, once you pack this thing and don't look at it for a couple months that you're gonna remember what's in there, okay? So when you're packing it, my suggestion is to take a couple of photos of some of the things that you're putting in there so you remember it. Email yourself those photos or keep them in a folder in your phone. Just save them. It will make it a lot easier to find. I find all too often when we use storage containers, um, for me personally in my office, I put stuff in containers, I store them in the back room, and then like if I don't label it, I don't know what's in there. It's impossible to remember months later. So make a list of the items if you feel to do, like just to remember, make a list of those things and, and put it on here. If not, take some photos. Whatever you do, try to just document it because I'm gonna tell you, a lot of times people fill these, myself included, I'm, I'm guilty of this, and you never look back until you're decluttering years later and you're like, oh, I haven't worn any of that. So be wise about the things you put in these bags and just label them and take some photos so you know what's in there. And if you haven't used that in over a year or so and it's not sentimental or very special, then part ways. <laughs> and then just one more thing on the closets that I personally love to do. Color organization is one of my favorite things. It makes a closet look good and it helps finding the items be much easier, okay? So when it comes to color organizing, you can get a little peek of that. Those are my blouses. So the way I set that up is I'll go from red to orange to yellow to green, blue, purple, black, brown, white, gray. Okay, you don't have to do it that way. I do it like, I do it like the colors of the rainbow, okay? Roy G. Biv. so I start with red. <laughs> That's how I do it. You could do it however, which way. I just think it looks pretty in that spectrum. So you can hang those that way, but do it by item. So those are my blouses. Then there's another area of my work dresses that are done in the same color order. Then I have the fancier evening or going out stuff in dresses that are in that. Because if you color organize the whole thing and mix all the items in and don't do it by section of type of clothing it is, it's a lot harder, I think, to find those things when you easily need them. So I like to do it in sections in the closet. Blouses, work dresses, 
going out dresses, pants, you know, that sort of thing. So do it by section. It definitely is easier um, to do that. And then when it comes to decluttering the drawers, I am a big fan of the KonMari uh, folding method. Marie Kondo's folding has revolutionized the way I store stuff in my drawers for years now. Um, just having clothes vertically stacked. And if you're not familiar with, with what that is, you can Google that, the KonMari folding. It stacks the clothes up. And what's great about that is if you lay all of your stuff flat in a drawer, you have to sift through it to find what you need. And that creates sometimes more of a mess. So having those items folded so you're, you're stacking them so you can see all of the stuff on one level definitely helps. It's a great way to keep down the clutter, keep it all under control. So I hope those some of those tips were helpful in getting the clothes and the closet and the drawers organized. But now I want to talk to you about refreshing the look of your bedding, okay? Because I think... That's something we could all easily change up from time to time. Right now, we're spending a lot more time in our homes, and I feel like at least if one room should feel more like a sanctuary right now, it's the bedroom, okay? Uh, I've seen things where you kind of want to make your home feel like a hotel right now. Make it feel like a place that's not home by changing it up, okay? So I'm going to show you some of my favorite folds of um, some bedding. Okay, so this is my bed. This is not the amount of pillows I normally put on it. It's normally a lot more, but I'm starting with it pared down. I'm gonna show you a few different looks and different ways to kind of refresh what you're doing with your pillows and your bedspreads and everything else. Okay, so let's start first with the pillows that we use to sleep on, okay? The pillows that we use to sleep on, I stack vertically in the back and I stack them with the ends out. So basically the part where the pillowcase ends, like the inside part that's like that, keep that in the middle. You, you wanna have those parts facing one another. And any of the pillows that are exposed have the finished edge of the pillowcase face the outward sides of the bed. This way it doesn't look sloppy. It's just a nice little tip that designers, we like to do when we stage for photo shoots, keep the side, okay, the nice finished side out, facing out. Okay, so for here, I sometimes like to do a Euro sham. Now, if you don't have Euro shams and you have larger pillows, this can still work. This is a queen bed. For a queen bed, typically two Euro shams. For a king, three, but you could sometimes also just do two on there as well. Um, they're about 24 inches by 24 inches. And I love them because it's usually another way to incorporate a different color or a different pattern to go with the rest of your bed set. So um, in front of the functional pillows that you actually sleep on, the ones that we don't always wanna see on display, you put the decorative Euro sham, okay? And then I like to stack a standard sham, which on a queen, full, or twin bed is called the standard sham. On a king bed, it's the king sham. Those are longer, obviously, to fit the bed. So I like to put these in front. Again, keeping the vertical height, I think it gives a nice contrast when you could have the two different fabrics. And now, let me just move that aside. So we're gonna finish up that side of the bed with another Euro sham. Let's go put that here. So. Again, and, and this like really pushes the pillows out. So when you're starting to make up the bed like this, you have to keep in mind, it's gonna make it much uh, more full, but I love that look personally. Now, say this is the finished bed. I like to complete a bed with throw pillows, more and more pillows. You can never have enough pillows. All right, so for here, what I, how I normally set it is I do, um, this one like larger fur pillow and then a smaller one um, with some texture. This is actually sequins. So I just like to do two pillows, okay? So I've got one in one, okay? And so you've got the, the bigger one behind it, the smaller one in front splitting in the middle. And this is kind of the look that I like. Now, so playing with different heights, you could always stack the larger and have a smaller one in front. Now, if you're more of a symmetry person, which I, I tend to also like that too. You could do three of the same size pillow across the front or just two, or even again, throw a different size one in the middle. So that's another great look that you could do. Now, say that you don't like the Euro sham look or you don't have them or you don't want that many pillows. Not everyone loves a lot of throw pillows like me. So I would just go with your regular shams. Again, those will go in front of your regular pillows. And then you might even want to just do two pillows, okay? Here we've got, I did two larger sizes. These are a little bit bigger. On a king bed, you could do two larger, or usually three sometimes fits better on a king. On a queen, I like the two. And if you notice, I am doing the pillow chop, okay? The pillow chop is still something I love to do. It just 
gives that designer touch to a pillow. It makes it look more finished. And I personally just, I, I like setting up a bed like that. So do that chop, gives it that nice look. And now one other way, so here we've got it with two pillows. But one other option is if you don't want a lot of pillows, this is, I always suggest to people who say, oh, I don't want a lot of throw pillows. Let's go simpler. Let's go either with a bolster pillow, which is one long pillow that sits in front of the sham. Sometimes it's round, sometimes it's square, like, like more rectangular like this. This is just a smaller rectangle, but if you're really not into a lot of pillows and you just want a little something, that also works just as nice, okay? So now the pillow part is covered, but what about the bedspread, the coverlet, all of that stuff? Now that's very important because you could really restyle the bed over and over and over again by changing that up. So I love a quilt. So you could either start with a blanket or a quilt that covers the full part of the bed. I put it all the way to the back, have all the pillows stacked on top of it, okay? Now what, and you could even tuck it in the mattress or you could leave it out. I like it tucked in, it's just a cleaner look. The reason this is nice, we're in South Florida, it's hot, you don't always want a lot of covers. I love to start with the quilt or blanket underneath that goes all the way, like I said, under the pillows. On top of it is where I fold the comforter or duvet if you have that. The reason I like this is because it gives just a nice finished feel. And again, sometimes you're, you want a warmer thing, but I also use it for the designer purposes of bringing in another texture or pattern or fabric. Okay, so as you see here, I just have this on, I'm just gonna let you see this. So this is just draped over the bed. Okay, this is just, I folded it up and it is draped over and I usually put it towards the bottom of the bed. It's getting a little cut off in the frame there. But this is like, if you just have a throw, a really fancy fur throw or something nice and you just wanna fold it, fold it into thirds and just drape it over the bottom of the bed. That gives the look of what we call a foot quilt type of a look. It's just like a simple, you know, look where it just dresses the bed up. But um, sometimes you want to make this easier so at night you don't have to roll all this stuff down. So I usually, I don't know if you can see this all here, I have the whole comforter like I'm just making the bed. So it just hangs off the bottom of the bed. And then I just fold it, I just fold it over nicely like this. Now, you see there's so much space here. Since we eliminated the amount of pillows, when you have this much space, you could bring this up just a lot, um, you can actually bring it all the way up to here. Some people don't want that much space showing, so what you could do is you could kind of bring it all the way up, okay? Now, depending on the kind of bedspread you have, you can just flip that part up like this too. I personally kind of like to make the bedding look thicker and fluffier, so what I do is I bring this, I kind of bring it all the way back, and then I fold it over. So I'm folding this down and then I'm folding it over just to give more of a fluffier kind of appearance to this top part. And it allows you to see the rest of the bedspread continue, okay? So what's nice about this look is that the pattern is continuous and this just looks more luxe and fluffier. So I love this look. A couple of ratios just to know. So when there's a lot more pillows, you want to leave a lot more space. You want to make sure you have enough space of the quilt showing. So I usually go a third up the bed with the comforter and then leave the rest for all those pillows. Here we have less, so I kind of go halfway up the bed with my quilt and coverlet. And then you have your space for your pillows. So it's sort of like a little bit, there's really no right or wrong way when it comes to making the bed. That's why I say try out a few different things. Try what you have. I mean, some people like this cover to go all the way up. I always love to fold something down. It really gives that hotel-like feel, that luxe feel. So whether you fold it down, fold the whole blanket over at the bottom, there's a lot of different ways to do that. And I hope that you can try them all and at least have a little bit of fun experimenting with different looks. Well, I wanna thank you guys for joining me this evening. I hope that you got some great tips. Don't forget to put your questions in the comments. I will get to all of those and there will be a blog on the Home Show's website as well with some great tips and a recap of everything we've talked about as well as some of the products. So I hope that you all stay safe at home. Please be well and thank you for joining me this evening.